theme song. Theme song. Life needs a theme song and personal branding. Do -do 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 -do. Hello, I'm Leif Anderson. Welcome to my completely unprepared for video about my newest boat. I call it the Snail. Uh, my first boat was called the Slug. I built it about uh, 10 years ago. I don't know, met long, long ago. And uh, it was. Uh, it turned out to be a very fast surf boat, even though I was trying to build a play boat. And I considered making the Slug 2.0, but I felt that there were enough changes that the snail just seemed like the logical evolution. Uh, yeah, so here it is. Here's the boat. Uh, this was supposed to be a prototype, but I ended up making a pretty robust layup, so uh, maybe I'll paddle it for a season or two before doing some updates to it. Um, the basic concept was I wanted a fluid element that was fast enough to surf green skookum chuck. So I wanted just extremely fast boat, very, very fast, uh, and I also wanted it to be a little more stable. If you've ever paddled the element, you're one of the lucky few that has an element, uh, they can be a little bit intense to paddle sometimes. You get in boily water when you're not surfing. The boat just doesn't like to be upright uh, or flat. And so my concept for fixing that is these guys right here. I call them the pontoons. Uh, most surf boats, they have these really sharp rails right here where the rail comes out at an angle. But in order for a two-piece mold to release, you can't flare back out again. You've got to keep going in. Once you've gone in, you have to go in more so that the mold can come off vertically. So to get over that, uh, I made a three-piece mold. Featherweight boats are made with a three-piece mold. They're the only ones I know of. Uh, but having seen that concept for the cockpit rim, I thought to myself, why not take full advantage of it and do the same thing for the sidewalls. So the sidewalls, they have those sharp surf boaty kind of edges. And then once it's up high enough that the boat is not interacting with the wave at all while you're surfing, they flare back out so that while you're paddling through boils and floating around in the eddy and that kind of stuff, you got some extra volume to hold you up, some pontoons. Uh, and that part ended up working pretty well. The boat was nice and stable while paddling um, through the boils, that kind of stuff. Very nice and forgiving. And then while surfing, these things were just up in the air, didn't really mess with much. The one exception was whenever I would try to do tricks, uh, I have a great clip of trying to do a clean blunt and the edge bites in and it feels like it's going to go great and then right around the time where the edge finishes biting in and you got to swoop the stern through and pop out, uh, the water comes up over the rail and when it bites in deep enough the water scoots along the side of the boat, it hits the pontoon and scoots back in the other direction which pushes the stern the wrong way and just completely cancels all rotation for the trick and just locks you in going in a straight line. So that part was not great. The other part that's not great, everyone I talked to, every single person where I was like, hey, I'm designing the boat, here's some photos, uh, they were always like, oh, that's cool, but uh, you think you might need a little more bow rocker? And I was like, no, nothing to slow the boat down, everything for speed. And I got to Skook, and sure enough, it was fast, but there was a moment where you'd be carving one way, and then right when you'd sort of slap down the boat to carve back in the other direction, it would hit right about here, and that part of the rail is still very flat, and so it wouldn't scoop the boat into the turn, it would just sit there and go straight instead of like turning more, and, and so it was a little bit funky in that respect. So I think I have a plan, maybe I'll move the rail up, but keep the bottom of the boat in the same place. I don't know, if this is a YouTube video, why don't all you armchair experts chime in in the comments section and tell me exactly where I went wrong there. I'm sure it'll be amusing. All three of you that are going to view this can tippity-tappity away there. Uh, what are some other things? Oh yeah, the layup. Um, uh, so I, the construction process, I built this thing out of styrofoam. Went to the hardware store, got a bunch of styrofoam, glued it together. I had a hot wire cutter and like a wood saw and some sandpaper and a drywall sander. And I just, you know, went at it. Had a big ruler too, a big drywall square. Measured every now and then. And uh, yeah, just shaped it to what I wanted the shape to be. And then um, applied a layer of glass uh, with epoxy over the top of it. And then sanded and fairing compounded that until it was smooth. Put a lunar layer, sanding, fairing compound, more sanding, more fairing compound for, for a long time. And then 
eventually it was ready to paint with primer and wax and then I built a three piece mold off of that plug and built this boat in two halves uh, inside that three piece mold. Uh, my, for those of you interested in the more technical aspects of the construction, I'll probably write a blog article. I was I'm tempted to say, link will appear right here, but it won't. Uh, I don't know, check in the comments section or something. I'll, I'll figure it out. You'll get a, you'll get a, you can find it if you're determined. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty proud of this boat. Watch for more footage of it this spring. And uh, maybe over the summer as well. And maybe I'll release number two. Check out the other video if you haven't already which features the snail actually surfing, but you can't really tell anything about the rails or, uh, or how it works. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my personal brand.